What's going on, everybody? It's the man with no name here. So, today, we are going to do a kind of overview of the infantry and just kind of a little broad perspective in showing you guys what, you know, you can expect or how to better utilize infantry in the Gates of Hell franchise, whether you're playing in campaign mode, you're playing in conquest, or you're playing online. So, the first thing, this first part of this is going to be kind of boring, but it's just for perspective as a visual aid to show everybody what to kind of expect when looking at your infantry series. Now, um, I'm in Conquest. I've, I've completed a German Conquest series, and this is the remnant of it. But I'm using it as a demonstrator. So, here we have an officer. And over to the right, you have specifications. You can change his winter wear, but it doesn't matter. They're going to automatically, you know, default to this winter or um, it non-winter weather um, attire depending on the map you play on um, veterancy here veterancy so you have uh, this tank crew here now veterancy here is this little chevrons with the star my tank crew here this tank man he gets veterancy points from kills that he obtains through either being a tanker or even as an infantryman. So you'll see here, veterancy level is five. It gives 40 by 60 XP points. Basically all that's saying is it allows for an increase of the base on the stats. So you'll notice here on this tank crewman, he is bare none. So his base is uh, 150 health points with a regeneration of one stamina is 100 with regeneration of three so that's how that's quickly how they heal back on their own without using a bandage or you know turn a med kit or something stamina is how fast they increase their uh, or regain their composure after doing combat sprint and their speed here is one now if you go to someone say that this tanker is level five his base is 150 but being level five he's increased by 60 you know points percent tile of his experience and this allows him to have you know 22 additional points so now his base health is going to be 172 his stamina overall would be 130 he's getting a 0.9 stamina regen which is almost four, so he'll regain it quicker. And then he will also have a plus three regeneration on his health. Now, um, as you can see, I'm just gonna kind of work down this line here. So after your speed, if you go to something such as your Falschemager units here that I have, you're gonna have better health these are the top tier units for the german infantry crew and on the multiplayer which i will show you in just a second there's actually like shows tier one elements tier two elements and tier even three and i believe maybe tier four but basically all the tier system is is you have your units so if we go up to the starter class of uh, generic um Drafty, you know, his base health is 200. Regeneration is very slow, 0.1. Stamina regen is fairly decent. Speed is 1. Now, then you go over to your Rifleman class, which is going to be just a little bit better. Still, you have your point, you know, 1 regen, 3. Um, but what can happen here is... I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I don't want to bore everyone. This is how you this is how you get your statistics for your units. So then 
if you go to your scout squad here, a generic scout squad, if you'll notice here, a lot of your scouts, their speed is a little bit increased, but their health is lower compared to, you know, a 200 base with 125 speed. And then you go to a scout who has 225 speed, but only 150 base health. That's the base level. So, um, now moving on down the line, we have our speed here. So you'll have a little bit faster speed, etc. And this goes for, you know, armor and units as well. If I scroll down here, I can click on the actual unit itself. It will tell me the max speed, fuel consumption if you really want to know it, the range it's allowed, the crew it can hold, the armor turret armor if it has any additional armor and then all the main uh weapons it has such as the two centimeter anyway but this is infantry so we don't really want to get into the vehicles now with saying that we're gonna go to the jaeger squad here and now we get into our weapons weapons are shown here which is, you know, if I click on this, all basically all the Jaeger squad is a submachine gun squad here. But if I click on various units here of um, this other class of infantrymen, we have the assistant squad leader who has a MP40. We can see that. Now we go over here, has a car 98. Go over a little bit more to our machine gunner and then also with the machine guns you have two different options especially for the um, mg34 and the mg42 you have the mg34 belt and then also i think it is the brandensburger is the mg42 but if you'll notice it says drum so this is just you know ammunition styles that were in the game now um, another thing that you can do if you want to go deep or into the actual infantry class you can actually click on the gun and then it won't technically tell you the gun itself but that's what it's on the infantry men so you know it's mg42 now if i click on the mg42 now I can get all the schematics. I can get the armor piercing or AP2, which is the other one. And then it tells me the caliber, rate of fire, all these different stats for the game. Bullet spread, all that. So it goes really deep into detail, but I won't bore you with the statistics and all that crap. So now... We're going into the next section, which is your perks. And essentially, the only thing that really differs in your perks is I've covered it in my previous video on the how-to series of the engineer status. So you see a mechanic here that's 0.5. That's his speed on how fast he repairs a vehicle based on the severity of the damage. So if you get a, you know, infantry unit, it's only half. But if I go to a tank crew member or an engineer here, they are at one. So their increase is a lot higher for repairing because, you know, that's typically what they were used for. Now, lastly, this is a big thing. Um, when it comes to uh, your units overall. So if I go down to a base level, um, you know, obviously if you have different class, also the officer, it shows secondary weapons also. In this case, here's the Luger, and then weapon three is a binocular. That's more of your specialized units, etc. Now, if I go to my very base level, um, you know, basically conscript you know prisoners the thing that is the biggest contributor other than your health 
which contributes to your unit's you know ability to react as well as the veterancy level it has this goes into your survivability on the missions so here i have a generic infantryman grunt that is a conscript for the wormach army now he's you know speed is not even one 150 base health 75 just an untrained unfit soldier for combat now with the weapon skills here we have your level and your accuracy you have rpg which is going to be your panzer shrek or your bazookas your rifles which are going to be your car 98 m1 garands you know svt 40s it list goes on and on and on you have your pistols which you know i don't hope i don't have to go into closer the smg classes and then your mg class okay so now we have here which is an all rifleman class except for the you know base level squad leader which is going to be your uh you know basic here war mod soldier so you can already see a difference so rpg rifle pistol smg mg they're all level ones except for rifle and pistol you'll just you'll also notice the accuracy so when you're adsing and you see the little number with the green or red you know highlight on it which i'll explain in visual in a little bit that is what's showing you the hit percentile or accuracy or effectiveness of your combat soldier so then if we go to the falsham jaeger units who are the most elite tiered uh soldiers for the germans if i click on this smg unit here he has mp40 his base health is going to be 375 with a regeneration it's slow but his stamina is 300 and it's very fast he recovers and he can run fast and recover and then run even more so now we get into the tier system of rpg rifle pistol smg mg we've noticed now it's increased from a four uh, a one and a one and a two and a two to a four four five five and four now this also increases accuracy based on the levels so you have basically a hundred percent you know accuracy or a well-off accuracy point rating for everything over here minus your mg but this changes per class because now if i go to this sniper he may have a lower smg rating than this guy here he has five but his rifle is up to a five and it's increasing his accuracy overall rating for his specific um you know attribute also he has aimed shot ability which is another ability now if you go over here to your mgs you'll also see that they are lower on some classes such as your rpg or your rifle but their mg is five now as you can tell the tier system these veterancy on these units are level veterancy two on both my mgs and then this uh mg assist for the luftwaffe is actually level four so you see the increase that it gives off in the battle now you can see he has rpg or bazooka for a six rifle is seven now pistol seven smg six and mg is seven so the levels do matter when it comes to infantry the last thing i guess i can say is the unique thing about a conquest series is i will show you guys right here and basically here's the thing so after a battle in the conquest mode i have you know utilized my bombing run you know i i lost you know my tank crew with this tiger 
And, you know, for the point of example, my Falsham Jaeger unit, I lost two units here. Now, over the course of the battle, these units here all gained experience and combat veterancy points were added to them. Now, we can see that some of these units don't have, you know, chevrons above their head, but that's because they either weren't in the heat of the moment in the chaos or because these are replacements. So now when I resupply my units, you'll notice here's this guy and this guy over here. They're brand spanking new units. And so there's kind of this respective, um, you know, you know, you think about combat when you have the unfortunate event where war happens and then you have a unit that is deployed or is over action. And a very good depiction of that is in the miniseries Band of Brothers. Number episode four is called Replacements. And what they talked about was after the initial invasion of Normandy, you get into the spring t or so, uh, fall time right before Operation Market Garden and into our oper Operation Market Garden. And they specifically talked about how they were basically getting a bunch of replacements. And you have, you know, soldiers who have already experienced combat for several months now who have experience they know kind of how things are going how how the enemy is operating and they're smart about how they're doing what they're doing so they don't get killed unless there's you know outlying um, exhibiting factors that they can't help such as you know an artillery shell falling so then you have new guys that have little to no experience at all and anyway in the series i will dissect from that is you know a lot of the new guys are getting killed so it's kind of following the same principle is that it's respecting the veterancy level of units and it's giving the you know the more times they kill or you know the more surviving that they have throughout each conquest it gives them ratings this does also happen for vehicle units so here i have my vehicle effectiveness if you'll notice here my panzer warfare it's the star is a six star my panther here is a eight star and then this is the example where i have two surviving crewmen from previous engagements and then i have three new guys including a new commander who has not seen battle but anyway i i will stop with the statistics i hope that you guys get it just like my guy carl gustav who survived the whole entire war and now he's back home or in the reserve status so now we're going to get into the, I want to show the tier system and then I'll show actual gameplay footage of what I'm kind of talking about. So I have opened up a local map uh, to play a skirmish in. And on the infantry tab, this is what I'm talking about. You have your military police squad. You have your cavalry recon, cavalry recon uh, team which is going to be your tier one status now this is basically your combat effectiveness x y and z now you go up in here you have your tier two which is your basic rifleman platoon divisions you have your first rifle division and then you have tier four down here which is going to be your rangers and your special warfare um special weapons operations this isn't the case for really your armor or anything like that however um it also shows tier two uh one two and three for your specialized um call-ins as well all right guys so i am just on a simple skirmish with fog of war off for ex explanation purposes but as you can see i'm starting to take fire with just a generic mp and we're shooting at this, you know, motorcycle. They all have one variants, but you can kind of see we're 
not really hitting this target. This is the other thing I was going to show you. Ah! So you have your first person, third person direct control that you have the ability to do. When you ADS, you have that little five with a green arrow. That's kind of my accuracy level. And you can see just shooting in the general vicinity, I shot eight rounds controlled. Management of way left, way high, way left again, way left, way right, way right. And you can see how combat effective, ineffective, these generic units are. I've already lost two units. Um, the health is not the greatest on these units. And they're about the same as, you know, just reserve status, if you will. Now, from war perspective, I have my infantry platoon. I have the 101st Airborne, which is the most elite unit in the game. But I have this medic crew also coming up. Now, what I can do here is I can double click this position and this medic will show his stamina. He's sprinting and that's one of the attributes of specialized orders, sir. units with higher stamina. They're catching up pretty quickly to my airborne units who also have high speed and health to the units that are just kind of nonchalantly jogging. Now, Ready to go, I sir. will show you that I have this medic here. You can see how slow he's kind of running, and that's just kind of a way that this game is balanced here. Ready to go, you know, I have a medic hot on the heels of these infantrymen. But if I start these medic or these uh, 101st yes, Airborne sir. and these yes, engineer at the same time, you'll see how slow this engineer is compared to the 101st. Just kind of slowly just peeling away. Any orders, and sir? then if I Ready were to, to go, sprint sir. this engineer here, he's running. I'll even give him a head start. Yes, and do the same thing here. And my infantry with the 101st clearly has way higher stamina and speed and they're already outrunning this engineer. Now that's not to say that the engineer is a crappy unit. He has his he has his strengths and he has his weaknesses. Speed and combat effectiveness is what the 101st is for. The combat effectiveness for this engineer is he builds things. He is tasked with repairing, building things. It's just sir. like these MPs. They aren't really combat units. They're more to be staged units. They're supposed to be a defensive unit, so to Ready speak. To go, sir. Now, I have my 101st coming out towards the point here. Um... Other than just generic things, each deployment of your units also has their own abilities. I know with a lot of your Ranger, your 82nd, and even your 101st, they have a lot of anti-tank and anti-light anti-tank mines in their arsenals or their inventory, which you can access here on the far left. You can actually hit I, which brings up their inventory. You can also hit this knapsack on the person. And then the cool thing is, yes, sir. is I want to show you this pretty cool feature. Now I have my taskbar with my entire unit. I can order them to start building foxholes here. Now I've already, I've already um, orders, shown the engineer class with the trenches and the concertina wire and those features but today we're just going to focus solely on the infantry class so one option is that i have is to build 
foxholes with these units and there's about each unit you'll see has a shovel most of them do they also have a demolition kit some of those do most of them come with mark ii grenades some type of smoke grenade white phosphorus or other smoke here comes an at crew but you can see just right here they're standing this guy's hip firing a 30 cal and our accuracy is a lot higher. We've already killed one guy. Our survivability is way higher. As we're about to see this, it looks like they might be coming in to kill. Now, what I can also do with infantry, as you saw it a minute ago, I can direct control a unit. Now, in the bottom left corner, you see my stance. I can go to crouch mode. I can go to prone. And then I can even stand up. Now, you see my health, which is 375. The timer is my is going to be my stamina. So if I hit shift like a normal game and start sprinting, you see that timer going down. It also shows the location of what my unit's on. Right now it says road. Now it's changed to ground. And then you get into the combat of marsh and everything else now one thing i do want to show you is this mg here i can ads but i'm hit firing not very accurate now if i reload with him and i position him in a place of cover and concealment it doesn't really matter as long as he's on top now he's using his bipod a whole lot more accurate with my placement of my shots. And there we go. A lot more combat effective. So now you can see it has shallow, marsh, you're gonna have water, and this actually grounds, whatever, whatever you're walking on does have effect, such as this shallow ground, a uh, hill elevation does slow down your unit. So that's another thing in the game to take into account. Now, with the MG class or your assault rifle class with your BAR, you're going to have units in here that are going to be, let's say, how shall I say it? You're going to have units that assist other units. So in this particular case, I have my AR assist which is going to go for my 101st automatic rifleman and then I'm also going to have a MG assist which is important now what the MG assist is for is he is responsible yes, so to speak Ready, for sir. carrying ammunition additional for my mg guy so now you can see in my inventory i have a full 100 round magazine and then i have the wrong button i have 167 extra rounds now what i can do person to person or as a unit just depends but as a unit what i can do person to person is i can direct control this infantryman, this machine gunner, and third person overview, I will hit the examine button, I will hover over him, and then I will examine his inventory. Now what I can do from here is I can right click or I can drag and hold and distribute, it doesn't matter, but then I can give that MG more ammunition. That is one way to do it. Another way to do this is that if you have your MG and your MG assist equipped in the same unit, so to speak. So right now, what will happen is I have 105 rounds left of my magazine here. Now, what I can do is when I run out of ammunition here, I'm going to try to show this. I'm ready. Actually, where's my AR assist? AR assist. Only one. Only one guy. Wait, okay. Sir. Cool. So what I want to do here is I want to show another way that you're able to get. You're able to get. You don't 
don't necessarily have to have them grouped up together in the unit. As long as they're in the unit together, they will auto give ammunition when they're needed. So he has five unit rounds left. So now that okay, so bam, I'm out of ammo. Now he needs ammo. Now obviously I could refill it, but what I can do here Ready to is go, I can sir. do this, and on him. Any orders, sir? Ready to go. I have sir. to let him see. He's starting to reload. So what he's doing actively right now is he is taking from his inventory one of these AR assists. And these right, AR assist guys right here have ammunition. So if I brought him over and put this AR yes, distribution into the same squad, Always ready. he would then get more ammunition. The same goes ready, sir. for ready this no command, MG sir. assist ready or go, ammo sir. bearer, which is over here. So orders, if sir. I come over here... And I shot all my rounds. Make this super easy. Do this. Alright. Ready to go, sir. Now, if I have my if I have my if you'll notice here, this is what I'm talking about. So in a natural sense, if I just have this infantryman here by myself. He's in his inventory. He only has 100 rounds. He has no ammunition. But if you'll notice, when I group up these orders, units sir? together, now, if I'm in direct Always control ready. with this unit, as long as he is in the same squad, infantry, platoon, whatever you want to call it, as these MG ammo bearers and MG assists, that ammunition will be in his direct inventory access as well. So it's like, hey, I need more ammo. He gives it. So now the total is 1,167 ammunition over just the 100 that he has in his uh, direct inventory, which is here. So one last thing I do want to show, and there, again, is a bunch of things. But as I have this down unit here, you see this bleed out icon. Now what I can do is I can come over here and heal him. The higher the health of the unit, the higher the bleed out time, so to speak, there is on, on my unit. So he's starting to bleed out. I'm sending my medic here to help out with the Any down individual. One other thing also while this is going on is this Sherman 76 has a rear uh, top mounted 50 cal. Now if you take into effect the actual statistical increase of the airborne unit versus getting a generic tank man, he will then take on the 50 cal role a lot more aggressively and effectively than it would be for a generic tank man top. He also has an increase in health, so that also gives him an additional advantage being on top of the tank. The only other thing, guys, that I'm really going to work on in this that, you know, can be told at this time is that when, you know, you utilize your ammunition for your infantry. One thing to be, you know, certain units supply differently. So here I have my medic, which I'll throw smoke grenades. And he's already used medic. two he's already used two bandages to heal that guy. Now what I'll do is I'll come resupply over here. And now He's resupplied on his ammo for his grenade. It take it takes a minute per establishment, but he upgrades his ammo. He uh, not upgrades, but he will increase 
his ammunition back to its generic form. Now on Conquest, you can actually save up additional ammo. When I do my MG ammunition and I individually transfer over the MG assist and the ammo bearers ammunition for the MG to the MG operator itself, when that MG operator does not use that ammo all up, he will save it and then he'll be added to the next time that he's, he's on the next mission. I'll show you how effective this 101st Airborne guy is on... It's just unreal. It's crazy. He's having to reload, obviously. But it shows you how quick he wiped it out. Um, the only other thing is, is so if I were to utilize, you know, my grenades, which I accidentally chose the wrong guy for. It. But this, I just threw a grenade for this MG operator. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll go over here to resupply, and he won't, he will resupply, okay, cool. Now, with that being said, it just depends on the unit. If you have your infantry units here go, that, that will resupply with an ammunition dump or ammo can, you have other units such as your engineers who I, again, have done a video on, showed Ready, you sir. things that they will need to be resupplied with by a MG, uh, or a, a, an engineer truck, or an engineer um, uh, quick call, uh, trike, whatever you want to call it, for the access. So, guys, in a sense, that is the infantry, infantry, down uh, there's a lot not a whole lot more that I can really add to just the generic breakdown the only thing that I could add in addition to this would just be your field of view your infantry order, has sir. a limited view go, but together as I've shown Medic, you in my various conquest videos when you Ready, utilize sir. units together so that they're able to assist one another in the field of view aspect they'll help each other out if I were to have a field of view with these units here they would probably see about halfway across this you know like my field yes, of view sir. for this tank is predominantly going to be where the turrets faced I'm not going to really be able to see into that fall uh, that smoke right now and I wouldn't obviously see this field gun being coming up behind me field of view has there is the advantage of field of view with your officer which is here he has the binoculars and he's able to see a very limited scope of an area so he would be able to look across this section here and I can show that in a moment all right guys officer so here, here we what's have the objective a generic officer and basically what I'm showing you here is you have this field of view here right this is what it would look yes, like sir. in a vehicle perspective you have your jeep with your Mounted 50 cal on top. Ready, sir. Another view without distortion would be here. You kind of have your 100, almost your 180 degree, but you don't have anything behind. That's pretty much what you're going to see when you have um, your officer here. The men are ready for infantry, battle. But it's going to be in the direction that they're facing. So we'll cross this creek here real quick with this officer, and I'll show you a little bit more what I'm speaking of. Now, we have this sniper here sniper standing who by. also has the ghillie suit. Ha, sorry, not a ghillie suit. I was thinking of a different game. 
Um, he has the option here to, you know, dig a, you know, foxhole. The the unique thing here too is is you can trade. You know, I've also shown. I'm I'm trying to do a basic video here. It's not trying to get very sophisticated like it can get. But command, here sir. I have, you know, yes, this infantryman and this infantryman. What are your orders, sir? So. What, what I can water, do sir. here is say for whatever reason Grenade! that this guy shit gets hurt. And I don't Ready, have a medic sir. here, right? I don't have one in here. So if he ends up dying for whatever reason, then what I can do is as a as another off, you know a unit if i'm kind of scarce on supplies i can inventory his inventory i can view his inventory better rather and i can go ahead and take his stuff if i have the same weapon then i take all of his ammunition as well now in this case since this guy is you know low stacked on ammunition i'm probably just going to go ahead and take his grease gun and then bam, I have two weapons and it's in my inventory and I have his grenade, you know, X, Y, and Z. Now, this also works for the sake of time in this video, again, trying to conserve time. I'm trying to make a very quick and brief video that will explain just the basic principles of infantry. The, um, the medic will run fairly quick to go revive, especially if you double click, he will sprint over and get that revive off most regularly. Now with the field of view speaking, oh, wherever my Let's officer is facing, that's where my field of view is gonna come in. Few things happen, such as a bush, or if I say am going to be running around a building medic here where am i like i would be in here medic here so he died but if i was going to run around a building and i was trying to pie this essentially and there will be sometimes on hardcore especially there's a rendering delay on when they appear with fog of war activated so if i ran in here and as you can see there's nothing here but if i ran in here just now and then there would be infantry that would appear out of you know basically thin air that's where they are in the game but because of the fog of war aspect that can be a problem when you're trying to do close quarters combat and you get delayed and sometimes i get one tapped because my infantry skill set is not very high sniper here now with the commander oh, ability here. i have the regular fog of war but then I also have the binoculars. Now what the binoculars do is I can view a little bit more of a range. As you can see, the side of that hill lights up now by the train tracks. What that does is that allows me to essentially view the combat zone a little bit further off. And it will allow me to reveal more of the combat zone without doing any type of you know threat to my infantry now a good thing that you can do is i've read and done is you can change the firing mode to either hold fire completely or return fire so then the prime and then put the binoculars in the primary position of that's what he's equipped now this officer will return fire if he takes rounds but his primary job is going to be locating the enemy and it will be a little bit more effective in doing this. Now, another option is to go into third person while in direct mode. And then you can, you know, better, you know, view where you're wanting to look at because sometimes this is a little um, picky on how it wants to work. Now, with the sniper, the sniper will be the last thing that I will address. 
I believe while being in the infantry mode, I might do a advanced infantry um, option or a video down the road. But for simplistic sake, I have this sniper and he has a view of this area. He has a pretty increased view, I would say. Um, but as you can see here, you see his field of view, not even aiming in scope yet. And as you can see, there is my line of view. You see the on the map, you see the white view, which is going to be his technically his vertical, you know, 45 degree view being conservative because he is looking down the sight of his weapon. But then you're also going to have the the narrow view, which is going to be your direct line of sight with the scope and then the little circle at the very top on the map is going to be exactly where the scope is aiming. So with the, the precision shot, what you do is you hold ADS or as you can see here, that little line, that circle closes and gets small, 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 small. And when it gets finally rested, it will be as accurate. It's a, a very accurate shot. You can pretty much one tap most infantrymen um, when you're doing this now standing it does alter the accuracy as it would in real life best way to do this is either behind cover so you're resting against a sandbag or in prone now when doing this the sniper scope is the same way and then if you move around real quickly he'll lose his focus and he'll have to reset but if you do it slow while someone's say walking you can pretty much stay on target while doing this. The last thing I will say is if you do have some problems shooting a target with the precision scope, the other option with precision rifle shooting or just in general is you can go into third person and you can view where you want to shoot at. You can see that's where my crosshair is. And right now it's showing the six. Now if I move up here, it shows seven. And if I were to just shoot this rifle, let's see if I can get, it's pretty accurate, right, right there. Now if I'm doing this again, boom. But if I come over here to the six, it's, it's missing right there. If you saw that, it's low. So, there is that to take into consideration. Now, if I want a precision shot, what I do is I hold it on my target and let that circle get super small. You can kind of see it. See if I can get it to reset. So you see that sniper scope filling up in the status bar? That's what you want. And then when it sinks in, then I can take my shot and most time if you aim for the head and or upper body with a mid tier or low tier, you know, infantryman, it will kill a one hit kill most of the time. It's not 100%, but it will work. Fallschirmjäger may take two shots depending on their overall health and what part of the body count you get on your statistics. So guys, I appreciate the video uh, views. Um, I hope that this video gave you a little bit of insight into this game. It isn't, I didn't break down everything because it would take literally probably two hours to probably break down and process everything. Because I mean, with the new DLC, plus having to cover all the factions in specific detail would take me a very long time and no one I would think would not be as interested in doing as I showed on the very first part of the video which is all your statistics and everything else but with saying that I hope that this basic infantry guide was beneficial to you so that you guys could you know learn a little bit more about just various infantry units they do 
have specialties in what they are for, what they do, and the more you combine these units together, you can kind of get a more successful result. Now, don't be a full infantry up against, you know, a, you know, a German infantry division up against, you know, a Pershing tank is not going to be super combat effective. The tank's going to win 95% of the time unless you get a lucky Panzer Shrek hit or a bazooka hit that's going to disable a tank and then you can move in and take it out. Now, with saying that, if you have a good diversion going where, say, you do have a couple of tanks and then you have some infantry that can flank a face-to-face -face tank or you can have them preset in a defensive mission, then you can use, you know, your flamethrowers, your anti-tank men to pop up real quick disable or destroy a tank and then pop out of there but we may get into an advanced video later on showing different tactics with your infantry but that was a basic infantry breakdown i hope that this video guide was helpful i hope that i will continue to make more content that is enjoyable to watch whether it's my conquest series or my how-to series or you know playing hell let loose but again, this series is specifically based on information I've predominantly learned by playing the game. I very rarely will watch how-to videos on this game because one, most of the time they're not existent, but then two, uh, I, I enjoyed learning how to play this game mainly by myself. There were a few things that I have learned in playing with other people and learned just through just this that or the other thing the officer for example was one of those things i was trying to figure out for a while and just playing like what is the benefit of this like is it to increase to the units does it give them extra health have extra combat effectiveness it does not unfortunately i wish it would do something to give some type of benefit for them being out there um but anyway We'll probably do a very brief officer video down the road too. But in the meantime, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you learned from it. Um, I know it's been a uh, problem slash comment on my previous videos, but my voice was deafened towards the audio of my game. So I have fixed that and I hope that everything else is going good. And I appreciate all the views, comments, subscriptions, likes on my videos. I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. If you subscribe to my channel, it's because you like the content and it's what I do that you enjoy watching or you're learning from. And that's what makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy. And again, I thank you for your support. But anyway, with that being said, I hope that you learned more about infantry today. I know that one person was commenting they're waiting for this video so i give you this video now and well guys please enjoy my u.s conquest that's coming out pretty soon and we'll see you all in the next video Bye bye